Among the slides passed to Hitchin Historical Society from the late Bill Palmer was a carousel marked Hitchin Old and New. It contained a selection of images of varying vintage. Some culled from old postcards, some from the museum, and others taken by Bill himself between the 1950s and the 1990s. For this selection I've looked through Bill's other boxes and carousels and maybe cheated a bit by adding some from my own collection and some taken especially for this presentation. The slides start with this inscription The Royal Manor of Hitchin. It looks quite grand but where is it? Ah, oh, here it is. It's on the back of the war memorial outside St Mary's Church. The next slide is this undated postcard showing various views. Let's start our tour of Hitchin Old and New using Bill's slides as a guide. We'll try to look at all the subjects shown on this postcard. Later on you'll see the Walsworth area of the River Purwell with the Sailor Boy pub and the thatched cottage. But first we look at the town centre including the marketplace. The Corn Exchange and the High Street along with other sites. We start on Windmill Hill. This hand-coloured postcard is marked 1860 but must really be after 1874 when Frederick Seabohm donated part of his hermitage grounds to the town, forming a shorter route to the station, Hermitage Road. A horse grazes peacefully on the left and the road in the centre is noticeably uncluttered. Another view is undated, but the size of the trees suggests its date is close to the previous picture. It gives a clear view of the Waters building in Bancroft at the far end of Hermitage Road. We next jumped to 1952 for a colour slide of much the same view. The buildings either side of Hermitage Road were built in the 1920s. Notice the lack of traffic. The buildings on the corner a residential or office space at ground floor level. The Waters building is still there at the far end. But oh, what's this in 1978? Like a gap in front teeth, the Waters building has vanished. We can also see the corner buildings at the near end are now retail premises at ground floor level. And there are plenty of cars parked in the road. A slightly offset view from 1984 and the far end is now occupied by the bland brick frontage that was Safeway's first store in Hitchin. The junction with Queen Street and Walsworth Road in the foreground has sprouted traffic lights. Not much different in my own view from 2014. Safeway has become Wilkinson's and there are more cars parked. Swinging our view to the left we can look down over Hollow Lane in Bill Palmer's picture from 1971. Garrison Court is in the foreground. The building on the left is the Telephone Exchange. I found this picture by the Reverend Bob Tebbit of a similar view showing further building work in progress. Unfortunately it's not dated. We've moved down the hill now and across Queen Street to what's described as the Big Inn in 1960. I can't recognise this as part of the Big Inn almshouses. It may be in the area that was cleared to make the new market area. This view by Bob Tebbit is what we're used to seeing. The exterior looked like this in 1977 in Bill Palmer's slide. It's not changed much since then, but today this view is obscured as the saplings in the foreground are now mature trees hiding the Big Inn from our gaze. Another hand-coloured postcard at the turn of the 20th century shows the church gates seen from Marketplace. George Spur took over the premises at number 14 in 1901 and the business bore his name until the building was demolished in 1972 to 3. The building on the left acquired its half-timbered facade at some time between the wars. Belgian refugee Gérard Cunis was the proprietor of fashion store Maison Gérard. 
This view must be 1920s or 30s. Here is the building in 2018 as a coffee shop. Here's another postcard, undated, showing the church gates. It's said that the gates were installed to deter grave robbers who stole bodies to sell for medical research. Martha Flint's milliner's shop was there from 1878 to 1926. Halsey's delicatessen took over the building and the adjacent one, as seen here in the 1960s. And again in 2018. While we're in the vicinity of St Mary's Church, who could resist the photo opportunity given by a climb up the tower to survey the marketplace? The buildings to the right of the church gates were still private dwellings by the look of this postcard from about the turn of the 20th century. There is a sign outside the Rosen Crown which in that period was run by members of the Males family. None of the other shop fronts are recognisable. However, in this view, probably taken in the 1920s or 30s, many familiar names have appeared. Garrett and Cannon's sweet shop is in the block next to where the church gates stood, here replaced by a pair of bollards. The corner building is now half-timbered and occupied by Gérard Cunis's shop, Maison Gérard. Allingham's butchers have taken up residence on the far side. Home and Colonial stores were next to the long-standing hitch-in business, John Shilcock Auctioneers. Lipton's Grocers is next to the bookshop of Hitchin Printers, Paternoster and Hales. At the far side of the picture is the shoe shop of Freeman, Hardy and Willis, whose mosaic panel remains to the present day. Finally, we see the sign proclaiming Cash Chemist and Household Stores, which was Timothy White's, as we shall see later. Moving on now to Bob Tebbett's shots taken in the 1970s. We can see that Gatwoods have taken over the building that was the hair-cutting rooms in the previous picture. Allingham's, Shilcox and Freeman Hardy Willis remain. Notice that the market square is now in use as a car park. Bill swung his camera round to look at Charnwood, the old museum, top left. Further round is the Lairidge cattle market, already closed by this time. Further round we can see as far as the gas works north of the station. Church House is in the foreground, and beyond must be the chimney of Russell's tan yard surrounded by scaffolding. Further out still, we get a view of the bank holiday crowds at the market stalls by the river, Mount Garrison and Windmill Hill in the background. Coming down from the church tower, we move into Churchyard. This postcard is dated 1860, and this is what it looked like in 1950. I understand that the railings were not removed during World War II, but some time earlier. By the 1970s, there was a hedge surrounding the graveyard. Bill's slide shows Churchyard in 1980. By 2018 the hedge was quite tall and the trees had also grown. Bill's tour of the town doubles back to take us down Sun Street, probably before 1900. This photo is captioned Sun Street in 1909. A sunny day in 1914 gives us this view of the Sun Hotel, and just about visible, the sign for the Angel pub. A bit later, Sun Street looked like this. Here's Bob Tebbett's view from the 1970s. The marketplace end is dominated by the 1960s Churchgate development. The white line gives away the fact that in Sun Street, traffic could go both ways. By 2018, it was a one-way street, with a modern cobbled surface. We turn round now to look the other way, in this picture by Ernie Clayton, dated 24th of May 1960. 
Rollison's shop on the right, advertising the Sunbeam Recording Studio, looks almost derelict. Further down is Philpotts, a name that appeared in Hitchin into the 21st century. At the end, we can see the gates of the Priory. At the end of Sun Street, we find ourselves in Bridge Street, a street that's had different names over the years, but presently takes its name from the bridge that spanned the River His since at least 1784. The brick wall of Lucas's Brewery is on the left, and the Dial Pub is on the right. There's no date to this postcard, but it appears to be about the turn of the 20th century. Mr Crawley's butcher's shop, seen in the last picture, has several sheep carcasses hanging outside. Next is the plough pub, next to the wall of the bridge itself. Uh, or is it the dial? A little further into the century is this shot from nearly alongside the bridge, looking towards the triangle. The building on the right announces Percy Webb, agricultural engineer. We only know the full name because of this shot looking back. The plough and dial pubs have combined into one by now. Bridge Street ends at its junction with Park Street and Queen Street, a point known as the Triangle. This looks like it's from the 19th century. I'm not sure of the date on this picture from Ernie Clayton. The cottages in Bridge Street, on the left, have been joined to form Hillview Hotel and Restaurant. The island with a tree has been replaced with a rather mundane pair of keep left signs. Central are the Half Moon Pub and the Lister Hotel. In the 1970s the same corner became a car dealership and garage. Subsequent incarnations have been retail premises. A sunny afternoon in 2018 gave me chance to shoot this picture of the triangle from Bridge Street. I see the hotel has now elevated Dr Lister to the peerage. Let's return up Bridge Street and step into Tilehouse Street. This postcard showing the Three Tons pub dates from the 19th century. We saw the scene in 1903 from the other direction in the Edwardian summer video. A high level view in 1950 appeared in Hitchin Cine Society's film about the street. A rather shadowy view from Bill Palmer in 1970. A brighter view of the properties in Tilehouse Street, looking well cared for in 2018. Back to the 1800s and further up Tilehouse Street, at the junction with Ratton Road, isn't it amazing how the appearance of a camera brings out a crop of small boys to stare into the lens? The archway on the right is the entrance to Hall's Yard, which also appeared in the Edwardian summer video. The hanging sign on the right is on the Cooper's Arms. And forward to 2018. Well, the view isn't improved by the sight of wheelie bins outside the houses. The trees at the end tell you that now it's no longer a through road. Bill's slides take us now to the marketplace sometime in the 19th century. The postcard makers have gone overboard with pictures of Hitchin's marketplace. It's hard to place them in the correct sequence. This one predates the view from the church tower. Allingham's butchers have not yet arrived, although Montgomery in the same building appears also to be a butcher. The fashions and the horse rider suggest that it's early 20th century. Surprisingly, the Corn Exchange, with its iconic lantern, doesn't appear central in any of the postcards. This scene of a market in progress predates 1913, as the building right of the Corn Exchange is still Logsdon's Yard and Restaurant, as shown in this picture without a market. But more clearly here with another market, maybe in the 1920s. In the 1940s, the Logsdon building was demolished and rebuilt to house the shop of Montague Burton, the 50 shilling tailor. Bill Palmer took this picture of Morris dancers in the marketplace in 1978. Notice that the Burton logo at the top of the facade has been removed. This is a better view of the Corn Exchange 
and the Burton Building, possibly taken a little earlier. This scene in 2012 places the Corn Exchange Building centre stage. Burton, the tailor of taste, has gone and a bookshop takes its place. Now let's look across towards the church. Bob Tebbett took this in the early 70s. Points to note are the change of owner for the half-timbered corner building and the hoardings far right. Bill Palmer used the same vantage point in 1978. The hoarding is gone, revealing the gleaming white front of the Nationwide Building Society. Leaving the marketplace, we move into High Street and look back. This postcard shows a distant view of the Corn Exchange, with the Cock Hotel in the foreground. Another card from a similar date, looking towards the marketplace, with a clear view of the Corn Exchange. Bill only included a picture of the Cock Hotel itself, rather than High Street. In 2018, the floral displays were pleasing to the eye, uh, but rather obscured the line of sight along High Street. Still looking towards the market, a few steps back leads to the bottom of Brant Street. This scene dates from 1930. The previous year saw Brant Street decked out with flags and bunting, in July, to welcome the Duke and Duchess of York, the future King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. Back to 1930 and a much quieter scene. On the right we see the Methodist Chapel, the Dog Inn and the Hotel. All were casualties of the 1960s development. As you can see here from 1980, more brick boxes housing retail premises. By 2018 the names above the shops have changed but the buildings remain. The buildings housing the two banks nearest us are still the same as in 1930. Moving away from the market, we are now in Bancroft, looking back. This is a classic hitching view of the point where the road splits to the left to Churchyard, and the right the end of Bancroft and start of High Street. The building on the corner was the Trooper Public House in 1860. Here it is again in 1890. Once the new century dawned, it was taken over by George Moss's grocery business. The name has stuck with it ever since, Moss's Corner. In this postcard from 1920, the shop is obscured by a bus. The tiled mosaics that are there to the present day can just be seen. Readily visible in Bill's shop from 1980, the newly planted tree explains why it can't be seen at all in this picture from 2018. A little further along Bancroft is the junction with Hermitage Road. We saw the road from the other end when these trees were newly planted. This is dated vaguely 1900s. The procession was part of the Festival of Britain celebrations in 1951. On the right is the Hermitage Cinema, closed in 1964. This was evidently taken from the ill-fated Waters building. One of Bill's pictures taken in the 60s from the other end shows the Waters building. The hermitage is just about visible behind the lamppost on the left. This looks like a town publicity shot, probably from the 70s. The cinema was replaced by shops and the main post office. And finally, the view along Hermitage Road towards Windmill Hill in 2018. Beyond Hermitage Road, this view down Bancroft looks like a town publicity shot from the 1970s. And with the scene of Bancroft in 2018, we've reached the halfway point in our look at Bill Palmer's slides. Join me again in part two to see more scenes of Hitchin Old and New.